Okay, well, uh, welcome. It is uh, it is tenth week. Hold on, let me turn off this bell here. Okay, it's uh, tenth week. It's Wednesday. I have to apologize. Uh, I know I sent a message last week on Friday when I canceled class. I said I would post a video detailing what's going to be on the final, uh, and I never did. And so um, if you're wondering where that video was, I apologize. I, I haven't done it. I, I will do it. <laughs> I know this is like, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I said I would do it and I didn't, um, but, but I will. I will. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, the... I'll, I'll go over what what you can expect uh, on the on the uh, on the final. All right. I, I do want to say um, the stuff I'm going to cover today will not be on the final. And on Friday, um, it's going to be a little bit of a looser, lighter lecture. Not not really stuff related to Python that much. Um, but it you know it's the very last lecture of the year, academic year. I you know wanted to just kind of give you a bit of words of encouragement and quote unquote wisdom or something and uh, and so I wanted to do that on Friday, um, but yeah as far as um, today goes I'll uh, I will cover SQL and then yes I will describe in more detail what you can expect to see uh, on the final exam. Um, I know we have a, a bit of catching up and not catching up to yeah um, some grading to do. Um, also the, uh, I will get the data camp grades entered. Um, I will not do, uh, a data camp assignment this week and, um, I don't, I don't know what else, uh, I have to cover there. Uh, oh, and the campus wire, um, grades and, and I'll, I'll take a look and, um, maybe I have to make adjustments there as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody had any questions before I get started, um, just regarding some uh, class logistics here. But um, but yes, I will I will talk about the final, and I'm sorry I haven't I didn't do that. You know, this weekend I hope you guys had a relaxing weekend. This weekend um, I decided to just kind of uh, relax, and uh, and I feel like I needed a break. And I know um, school is going to be over in about ten days anyway, but. Um, uh, I relaxed, didn't do a whole bunch of uh, work related to uh, school, and it was uh, it was great. And so, you know, if you sent me messages and I didn't respond, uh, I apologize. Um, it was taking care of myself, I guess. All right. Um, as far as today's lecture goes, I wanted to kind of just cover um, a little bit of SQL. Uh, a lot of times, students say, you know. Um, say they, they want to learn SQL or something like that. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll look at job applications and they'll see in their job applications that they need to learn um, SQL. And so um, I wanted to say SQL is actually very easy to learn, um, but th th that comes with a bit of a caveat here. There's kind of maybe two aspects of SQL. And one is writing queries, okay? One is you basically, the SQL server, the database has already been set up and you as you know some kind of data analyst, some kind of data scientist, all you have to do is write a query that is going to talk to the SQL server, say, you know, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this, and the SQL server will provide that information back to you, okay? And that, that's what we are going to uh, cover. And that part, I, again, I say is pretty easy. It's pretty easy to learn. If you are familiar with using dplyr from say R, um, and, uh, and if you learn that uh, either in stats 20 or stats 102A, or perhaps you haven't learned it yet, um, it's kind of a, a fairly straightforward method as far as saying, you know, I want these columns uh, I want these rows with these properties and things like that. And it's a, it's a fairly straightforward way of uh, kind of writing searches or, uh, or queries. The other aspect of SQL is setting up the database and setting up, um, you know, the, the SQL server itself. And that is really hard. 
So I would say don't even try to do such a thing, okay? So don't try to set up your own SQL Server. You know, you can go online and you can look up like installing SQL. Don't, don't try to install SQL, okay? You'll like end up downloading something like MySQL or something. You don't need to, and then, and then you'd have to set up a database. That is really hard. And you would need to take an entire course on just kind of like database management and what, what the best way to set up a database is gonna be or something like that. That's not what we're going at. And when you apply for a job and they say, you need to know SQL, I am, you know, unless you're applying for database administrator, um, I'm almost positive that any job where it's a data analyst or data scientist and they say you need to know SQL, they're not talking about setting up the SQL server. That's, a, that's an entirely separate job. They're just talking about writing queries to get information from a server that's already set up, okay? So I just wanna kind of make that distinction clear that you are not going to be setting up a server and I don't wanna be teaching you that stuff. Um, and, that, and that's not really in our wheelhouse. What we're gonna be learning is how to basically run a, like write a search, a search question um, and the SQL server will give it back, okay? Um, in, um, in Pandas, there's already, or, or actually in Python, there's something called SQL alchemy. And this kind of creates an interface to interact with these SQL databases, okay? And so you don't need to uh, set anything up. Um, and so um, basically I'm going to download a SQL database, okay? Uh, and, and I've posted this on um, my GitHub, but you can also kind of download it from this thing, the uh, Chinook database, okay? And, and this is a SQL uh, database. It's in SQLite. It's kind of this, just this basic uh, SQL language that, um, that we can use. And you know, at the high levels, there's like my, minute differences between different versions of SQL and things like that. But you know, this is, this is gonna be fairly basic and we'll give you all the basics of needing to interact with SQL. And so you're gonna download this database. You're gonna get SQL Alchemy and you'll uh, uh, create what's called the SQL engine. And this will allow you to kind of write queries, okay? Um, before I get into that, I wanna kind of just point out a few websites that are handy. There's this website, um, W3 Resource, and there's a bunch of kind of exercises. And so if you're kind of like, um, if you know the job that you're applying for says, you know, there's gonna be a technical interview and you have to do some SQL, you can kind of click any of these things, you know, avoid these, uh, these ads and you can, um, um, you know, it says basically uh, write a statement to display all the information of all salesmen. All right. And so this one would be select star from, is that the name of the table? Salesman, a oh, salesman. should be salespersons, but okay. Select star from salesman and then you'll click submit. And this is kind of the most basic query. All right, apparently this is a great research, uh, website, but it seems to be bogged down with advertisements. And and I guess, I guess the server has to, uh, Get its money. Okay, but anyway, you can you can write these things, and then you can also click "Give me the solution." And when you click the solution, it basically has what I wrote: select star from salesman. Okay, and so um, so anyway, that this is a great place to kind of practice some exercises. There's another place called uh, SQL Fiddle, and um, and you'd have to kind of in. First, you have to maybe you build a schema, okay, by kind of uploading um, uh, kind of uploading a CSV file here, and then you would um, and then you you click build schema, and it will kind of import the CSV file there, okay, and then then it allows you to kind of run queries and ask question. Um, run queries in SQL, okay? Otherwise you have to kind of set up your SQL server and that is not what we wanna do. 
OK, but here we can just use the, the Chinook data set. OK, and this is um, Chinook, I think, is a uh, uh, American Indian, Native American uh, word for trade winds or something, because there was, uh, or winds, I don't know. It's, it, you know, you have these helicopters, Chinook helicopters kind of coming from the same word. Um, because there's there, there used to be another data set called the uh, trade winds or winds data set. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're going to just import pandas. And then we're going to um, uh, import create engine from SQL Alchemy. And this is kind of the, the library that allows that's going to power our uh, SQL database. And then we're going to load up this SQL. SQLite file. So this is a file that exists that uh, um, that I've uploaded into uh, the class GitHub, and then you will kind of create this this engine here. Okay. All right. And so once you have the engine, then you can start interacting with the database. And so uh, the way SQL works is, you know, uh, on the database server, there's going to be different tables, and so we can just kind of ask. What are the names of the tables? All right. So we've created the engine. We're going to just say engine.table names. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save that as table underscore names and we'll print that out. Okay. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Okay. Oh, get table names. I guess uh, this is deprecated. All right. So I apologize. Uh, we should use get underscore table names. No, it doesn't like that. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and stick with this for now. All right, so we've got um, the album table, artist table, customer table, employee table, genre table, invoice, invoice line, media type, playlist, playlist track, and track, okay? The um, kind of the, the premise of this database is, um, I don't know if you guys remember, prior to Spotify, and I think, does the, is, is the iTunes store still a thing like where you can buy like tracks individually one at a time for like 99 cents? I, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> done this, but um, basically this is kind of like a, a, a database of uh, a few different things. One is one has um, album and track information, right? There's like informations on each, each track. Each track comes from an album. The albums are produced by an artist. And so you have, you know, a table of albums, a table of artists, okay? And then you also have kind of a customer table and an invoice table. And basically these orders is that, you know, from a customer, a customer might say, I want to purchase this song and I want to purchase this song. And so you have another, you know, different part of the database where, um, you know, uh, it's an order, you know, where the person purchased, you know, like five different songs from three different albums or something like that. And so you have information about you know the customer and the invoice and things like that. Uh, I guess we also have a playlist table and, and 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 things like that, and also maybe an employee table in case you know maybe the maybe the customer had to speak to an employee about which songs they wanted to purchase or something. Okay, so this is um, this is kind of the information that's stored in this database. Okay, so let's say we just want to look at what information is there in the table album, okay? And so here, the query that we are going to run is gonna be select star, basically select all of the columns from the table album. Now, SQL is not case sensitive, but the kind of the tradition is that all of the SQL keywords are written in all caps, and then you, you use proper capitalization for the column names and the table names and things like that. So here we're just going to say, you know, give me all the information from the table albums, right? Select so select is used to select the columns and star is basically select all the columns. Select all the columns from the table album. Okay. Now here I have a bunch of kind of lines that can be used, and basically it starts with connect to the SQL engine, execute a query. Okay, and uh, and so we're going to say from the create a connection to the engine with that connection, execute a query that's going to return some results. 
and then fetch all of the results, put all of the results into a data frame, close the connection, and let's print out the head of the data frame, print out the keys of the data frame. And it's a lot of kind of stuff here, but that's that's kind of the, the way um, a SQL query works. So we're gonna open the connection, execute the, uh, execute the query, fetch all of the results from that query and store it, okay? And so here's the results and we get album ID, which is uh, 0, 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The title of the album is, you know, for those about to rock, we salute you. Balls to the wall, restless and wild, let there be rock, big ones, okay? And then artist ID, all right? And so artist ID, so artist number one produced both, for those about to rock, we salute you and let there be rock. Artist number two produced both of these albums, Restless and Wild and Balls to the Wall. And so, and this is just kind of the head. This is just the uh, the first kind of five lines of the, uh, the query, okay? Now, this is kind of, uh, to have to go through this every single time is a little uh, annoying. So, you know, there's a few ways we can do this, right? So maybe we want to say, all right, let's look at the employee table, okay? And let's say, so, you know, we have to kind of, we would have to know what the keys are in the employee table, but inside the employee table, there's columns, last name and title. And we can just say, you know, select these titles, see, select these columns, last name and title columns from the employee table, right? And this is a multi-line string. So I'm gonna put this in triple quotes. And then I can kind of use the with, and this will open and close the connection. So if I do with engine.connect, this will open the connection and close the connection at the end. And inside I can do the, the things where we execute the command, we put them all in there, and then we can give the, we can rename the column names using the keys. So I can go ahead and do that. And we can say, all right, these are the, the this is the results, the last name of the employee and the title. And we have last name Adams is a general manager, Edwards is a sales manager, last name Peacock Park and Johnson and things like that. And these are sales support and IT managers and staff and things like that. Does the command have to be a uh, multi-string? It does not. It could be on one line. Um, kind of the, I don't know, the tradition, the tradition is that each kind of SQL keyword uh, a lot of times ends up on its own line. Uh, so you'll have a line for select and a line for from and a line for where and a line for limit. So all of these kind of keywords, and this is just kind of to the, the purposes you wanna make your queries uh, both uh, readable to humans as well as machines, right? So, so the machines are a little bit less picky, but the, or, I mean, regarding um, capitalization, but as far as humans go, you know, having it all in caps here helps us having them on separate lines uh, helps, right? Okay, now, <laughs> So this is still, uh, maybe this is a slight improvement over this, okay? But thankfully for us, with pandas, with pandas, there is a command, read SQL query, that basically does all of this. Pandas, you just do read SQL query, you give it the command, you give it the name of the engine, the engine that it connects to, and... Um, and you can say, you do this and it's gonna store it, it's gonna produce a data frame. So all of this stuff, you don't have to do this anymore. You can just say, all right, this is the command, select last name and title from table employee, throw it into a data frame, and there you go. And, you, and now you get a data frame, all right? And so this is, this is much easier. Uh, and we all say, thank you pandas for basically making our life easier. So all you have to do is write the command and give it the engine. So the, the again, the engine we pr produced way back here where we just said, create an engine using this database that, uh, that already exists, okay? And so this is probably the hardest part as far as training SQL is something you gotta find like SQL databases that, that are freely accessible. And there's not a ton out there. <laughs> there's not a ton out there. So I would say, um, but this is a pretty good database the, the Chinook database is pretty good and you can use it to, uh, to, to practice a lot of kind of these, uh, these queries here. All right, so far, so good. Okay, this will be your very last view quiz 
Okay, we're not going to have one on Friday. Um, I hope you still come on Friday, but um, but we're not going to have one on Friday. Okay, so very last view quiz. The first answer, A, A as an apple, A as an apple. First view quiz answer. All right, so I'm going to just kind of introduce a few different. Um, I guess keywords and things, uh, or um, that you can do in in SQL. So uh, order by is basically sort. Okay, so you can say select um, you know these columns from some table, and then you're going to order by you know whatever columns, and you can say I want them ordered ascending or descending. Okay, so here we're going to say select all the columns from the employee table and order by the birth date column. And we're gonna put that in descending order. And then again, all we have to do is we just do pandas read SQL query with the command in the engine, all right? So this pandas is so, so great, really. Um, the fact that we can just write a, a command here, okay? And I hope this, I hope the uh, simplicity of this and just kind of how great the simplicity of this isn't lost on you guys, okay? Uh, I, I intentionally included this obtuse and you know frustrating method, just so you, hopefully you'll start to appreciate this. Okay, so anyway, we said select everything, select everything from the employees table. Okay, so we get uh, Jane Peacock, Michael Mitchell, Robert King, Laura Callahan, Steve Johnson. Okay, and then we can look at their birth date. All right, Jane Peacock was born 1973, August 29th, 1973, July 1, 1970. So, so in descending order. So I guess Jane Peacock is the youngest employee of 1973. This is, I guess, an old data set. So uh, today, Jane Peacock is what, 48, 48, something around there. Um, I think probably the data set was created back in the year 2000 or something. Okay. And, um, and our most senior is Margaret Park, born 1947, which puts her at 74 years old today, or 73 years old, okay? Maybe back in the year 2000, probably from when this data, you know, back when people were buying MP3s, you know, on a track-by-track -track basis 20 years ago or something like that, um, that this, these dates would have worked. But anyway, it, it's fine, okay? So we put these in descending order, and so the uh, the the highest value, which would be the youngest person, is first, and then the lowest, the oldest, is uh, is back here. Okay, all right. So that's uh, that's order by. All right. Um, you can uh, filter rows. Okay, so you can say I only want the rows where the employee ID. Okay, is greater than or equal to six, and the title is IT staff, okay? So basically you're just using, you're plugging in column names and you're giving it a condition, sorry? Here I'm saying column name, employee ID needs to be a number greater than or equal to six, which will be uh, these three, six, seven, eight. And then we have, uh, we want the title to be equal to IT staff, okay? And so notice in SQL, you just use a single equal sign single equal sign, because as far as SQL goes, when you write queries, you're going to, you're just extracting information. Uh, you're, you're generally, when you write queries, you're not entering information into the table. Usually the entry of data into the table is handled by kind of a separate process. This is, you're kind of just, you're basically doing searches, right? Like when you do Google searches and you search for something and you get back results, you're not like creating websites when you do this, okay? And similarly, when you do kind of SQL queries, you're just getting back uh, informational results and you're not really like creating entries. And, and there are commands to update and um, enter new new values into the table, but um, but that's not what we're gonna cover here, okay? All right, so so anyway, here we just say select um, employee ID. This, this condition is actually redundant but, uh, but we can do that uh, entitled IT staff. And so we get these two people, Laura Callahan and Robert King, uh, both from, I guess, Alberta, Canada. And it's 
blah 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 okay and so this is uh this is what we have okay and that's handled with the uh the function where okay so this will uh create extract out rows okay now sometimes you have um big lots of results okay and so kind of like in um in pandas there's a head that just says you know give me the first few uh, similar to R, just give me the first few, you can say, you know what, limit it to just say 10 entries or something like that, right? So here we can say select everything from album, okay? Select everything from album and just limit it to 10, okay? And here, this is going to be the, uh, the results, okay? Whereas back here, we had something similar where we say, give me um, Here, the data frame here actually has all of the rows, fetch all from album, but we limited just the head to just the first five rows by doing df.head here. Here, the actual data frame itself is just 10 rows because the search query is limited to 10. Okay, so here we have that. We can say, all right, let's, let's take a look at the artist table. I wanna just see kind of what's there. So we're gonna just take a look at the first 10. And so now we can say, oh, you know what? This is from ACDC, right? For those about to rock, we salute you and let there be rock is from ACDC. And then we have accept doing uh, these things. Big ones is from Aerosmith for Alanis Morissette wrote Jagged Little Pill and things like that, right? So these are kind of the different um, uh, artists that appear in our data set, okay? And so um, the next thing, you know, so, so you can write all kinds of queries just where you can look at one table, but a lot of SQL's power comes from doing joins, okay? There's joins, okay? Where you are going to take one column, so say here, artist ID, and, uh, and you're going to match it up, right? So for those about to rock, we salute you, artist ID one, you can uh, look up over here, and can say, oh, that's going to be ACDC, okay? And you want to match these things. And you can be like, well, why don't you just write ACDC and ACDC here and accept? Like, why do you have this column? I mean, this is not very helpful to just have this thing. Well, the reason why is that one of the principles of a database design, and again, you are not going to design the database, is that you want to avoid the chance for um, errors in terms of having um, duplicate entries, right? So um, let's say, you know, somebody, the, the name of the, the uh, musician or band is ACDC, okay? Now, if we wrote the artist name here directly, rather than having an artist ID, okay? Somebody could write capital AC slash capital DC, Okay, and then over here, somebody might have a small typo or just a different thing, and they might have uh, like capital A lowercase c. Uh, maybe they use a dash rather than a slash, and they do lowercase d or something like that, right? And that's technically, those would be different entries, right? We have slightly different characters, and we might not recognize that that's the exact same album or same artist. And so what, um, by having an artist ID, okay, you just put in the number one here, okay? And that will make sure that every time the name appears, it's, it's identical um, across uh, all kind of entries with that, uh, with that number there, okay? So here, what we're gonna do is we are going to create an inner join. We're gonna say, um, what we want to do is we want to select from the album joined with the artist table. Okay, so we want to take the album table, which has uh, the album IDs, the titles, and the artist IDs. Okay, and we want to join the album table with the artist table. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say match it up using the artist ID. The artist ID in this table needs to match up with the artist ID in this table. Okay, and so we're going to say uh, select from album in joined with the artist and the way we're going to join is by using album.artist id is joined with artist.artist id okay 
Okay, so we're looking at the album table and the artist table, and we're joining based on these columns here. Okay, and we're going to ask select uh, return everything here. Okay, and so here we've returned basically the album table joined with the artist table, and we can see oh, okay where artist ID is one, we have ACDC for Let There Be Rock, we have ACDC for, for these two albums, we have accept and accept and things like that. And we can see that the information matches appropriately here. Okay. And so, um, so we have that, okay? Now you might say, well, you know, I don't want this anymore, okay? And so, um, so you can specify which columns you want, right? So from this thing, let's say I only want the title and of their album, and I only want the name of the, the band or the musician, and I don't want artist ID, okay? So here, rather than doing select star, which is select everything, which includes the artist ID from album and artist ID from artist, okay? I'm gonna just say, I only want title, and I only want name. So I only want this column and I only want this column, okay? And then you can also use as, which will basically rename or give an alias to the name of the titles or name of the, the columns. So you can say select title as album title, select name as artist name, okay? And then this part remains the same. We're drawing it from the album table and the artist table where it's been joined using artist ID, okay? And so if I do that, we get exactly, basically the pieces of information from here that are kind of the, uh, the piece of pieces of information that we want. So far so good, any questions? All right, let me go ahead and give you your second view quiz answer. Second view quiz answer is the letter B, the letter B as in bear, the letter B. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to kind of introduce um, like a summary thing. Okay. So here you might say, you know what? I want to get the artist name. Okay. And I want to figure out how many albums, how many albums have they produced? Okay. So here, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to ask for count of album ID, okay? And we're going to summarize by grouping according to artist ID. So we're going to group using the artist ID, okay? And it's generally recommended if there is an ID column, you're going to group using the ID because it's possible, it's possible for there to be two artists with the same name, but have different IDs, right? So that, you know, just like there's, it, you could have two kind of people with the same name, right? It's hard to imagine, but you know, <laughs> it's possible that there's like a second um, Alanis Morissette who's not this or Alanis Morissette, and and maybe that person has also produced music, and um, and we want to just kind of distinguish. So so rather than grouping by the artist name, we're going to group by the artist ID. Okay, so we're going to say group by artist ID. Okay, and again. Well, the information is basically coming from album joined with artist, okay? And what we want to do is we want to select the artist ID, we want to select the name, which is the name of the artist, and we're going to add a column here, which is going to summarize the count. It's going to count how many album IDs there are, okay? And we're going to return that as album count, okay? And so when I do that, here we get, okay, uh, ACDC has produced two albums, except two albums. Audio Slave had produced three albums. Okay, let me just show you what happens if I remove um, you know what? Actually, I don't know how to. So if I if I just did um, if I did not give group by, okay, here it just kind of pulls out the first artist and the first name, and it says you have a total of 347 albums in your table, okay? But that's not what we want. We want to group by artist ID, and then and it does this, okay?
right? All right, so here I just kind of wanted to show you, um, again, looking at the album table, we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna sort by artist ID. So we're gonna select from album, so let's select everything, we're gonna order by artist ID. We'll kind of look at the, uh, the first 15 and then we can see, yeah, indeed Audio Slave has released three albums, okay? And the album was our, uh, Album ID 10 out of album ID 11 and, and album ID 271. Okay, so we can see indeed audio slave there. Um, I think I can do order by album count descending. Oh no. Is it arrange? Okay, you know what? I forgot. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So if you want to, after you've created a summary, sorry, you use having, okay? So let's say we want to, so here we want to say, okay, who who's produced a whole bunch of albums and stuff, okay? So we're going to do kind of the same type of thing. We're going to select the, uh, the artist ID, okay? And we're gonna group by, uh, we're gonna count how many album IDs they have. We're gonna group by the artist ID, okay? So this part's all the same. And then we're gonna do having, okay? So um, conditionals on the group by. So rather than saying where, okay? If we did a where, where is looking at the original tables, we're going to say al having is the conditional that you can place on the group by here. So we're going to say having album count, uh, I did greater than eight. Okay. And so these are, we have um, five artists who've produced more than eight albums. U2 has produced 10, Led Zeppelin has produced 14 albums, Metallica 10 albums, and things of that nature. All right, so you can do uh, conditionals on the group by um, using having. Okay, a couple more uh, examples. You can do calculations. You can do calculations with certain things. So here I'm going to just take artist ID, and then I can do calculations with this, and I'm going to do artist ID by two. Now, this doesn't have any kind of meaning, but you could imagine, like, let's say you want to convert from like feet to centimeters or meters or something like that. And you need to do some kind of calculations, uh, things, things like that. Uh, you can do that, okay? So you can take, uh, you can take a column and you can do um, operations, you know, or arithmetic operations using those things as well. Okay. All right, once again, um, I guess to um, more complicated operations. All right, I'm gonna probably um, run out of time here. Um, but here, okay, so I'm gonna just show you. We've got the album table, the artist table, that's what we've been working with. But we're also gonna look at the invoice table where these are kind of um, customers have created uh, orders and they, uh, the orders are um, being billed to here. And then the invoice itself, okay, has multiple, might have multiple transactions, right? So invoice one sold, uh, contains basically a sale of two songs at 99 cents each, okay? And invoice two sold four songs, okay? Invoice two sold four songs at 99 cents each, okay? So, so, um, you know, this is information unique to each invoice. And then, um, and here, this is kind of basically what, what were the items purchased, right? And so we have track two and track four was sold to invoice one, track six, eight, 10, 12 were sold to invoice two and things like that, okay? And so the track information will have, um, you have the track ID, okay? The track ID tells you basically, the name of the 
the song, okay? And so for those about to rock, we salute you comes from album one. That's a song that came from an album of the same name. And it comes with a, a few other things. And I guess the genre or the composer is not necessarily the same as the artist. And it has, you know, how long is the song and, you know, how much it was. And I guess there's some information on the media type. Okay. And then the invoice also has information about the customer, right? So we have customer two, customer four, customer eight. And so the customer table, you know, has information like the customer's first name and last name and their address and their city state and postcode and things like that, right? And their, and their email address. Okay, so how are we gonna do something like this, okay? Now, because we have a whole bunch of tables, it can get quite cumbersome to have to like, Say, you know, I want the first name and last name from the customer's table. I want this information from the invoice table and things like that. So you can actually take your table names and rename them, right? So here, it feels a little bit strange, but I'm going to start here with the from statement. We're going to do from customer, and you're, we're going to rename the customer table as C. And we're going to join the customer table, okay, which, which has all of this. We're going to join the customer table with the invoice table, okay? So we're gonna take the customer table and join it with the invoice table. And we're gonna um, join on the customer ID. So I've got from customer SC joined with invoice as I, and we're gonna take customer ID in the customer table and set that equal to customer ID in the invoice table, okay? And then from there, we want the first name and last name, the invoice number, the invoice date, and the invoice billing country. And we want to figure out, um, we want all the rows where the customer's country is Brazil, okay? Which could be different, right? So the customer could come from Brazil. This is the customer table, but the invoice could be technically billed to a different country. So we'll just see, you know, probably customers from Brazil, it's probably going to be billed to Brazil. But let's go ahead and just take a look and we'll take a look at the at first 20 entries here. Okay. And so we have um, Luis Gonzalez um, uh, being billed to Brazil. So everybody, you know, all of these customers are from Brazil and their billing address is Brazil. And it, and it has retrieved basically um, those entries. Okay. And we have the different invoice IDs, their dates and things of that nature. Okay. So this is a bit more of a, a slightly more complicated SQL query, but I'm hoping it kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense there, I hope. All right, okay. And so these things, um, you can also um, ask for just kind of unique entries. So you can just say like, okay, distinct, how many just different kind of bill countries are there? And so it looks like we got 24. You can say select distinct billing country from the invoice table. And this is basically all of these things. And you know, if we wanted to sort it alphabetically or something, we could do that, okay? Here, I'm going to draw join three tables. We're gonna join the invoice table, the customer table, and the employee table, okay? So the tables that I'm gonna join will be invoice as the I table, customer as the customer table. We're gonna join invoice, with customer, we're gonna make sure the customer ID and the customer table matches the invoice ID, customer ID and the invoice table, okay? The invoice table also has an employee table, right? So if you look at the, uh, the invoice, we have the customer ID, I'm sorry, uh, and invoice ID, where, where did I go? Oh, okay. Um, and we're gonna join it with the employee table and the employee table, I'm sorry, the customer ID, customer ID also has an employee table. So there's, um, if you look at the customer table, you have a support rep ID. This is a, apparently every customer is uh, assigned to a support representative who has an employee ID, right? And so we're gonna kind of match that up. So we're gonna say, um, join basically the customer table with the employee table. 
where the employee ID in the employee table matches the support rep ID in the customer table, okay? So this ID, employee ID and support rep ID don't have to have the same name. And basically we're gonna say, select first name and last name from the employee table and select all the other tables from the, all other columns from the invoice table, okay? Uh, comments in uh, SQL can be denoted with kind of two dashes in front of it. All right, so we'll go ahead and run that and we get what we get. All right, so we get, uh, so we have Jane Peacock. This is the employee first name and employee last name, right? So this is first name and last name of the employee table. And we have basically all of this uh, information. So these customer IDs are all assigned to Jane Peacock and these customer IDs are all assigned to Steve Johnson. So these are all kind of invoices that are um, associated with these employees. All right. And so um, again, we can kind of, to clarify, you can give it things and you can say employee first, employee last, and distinguish it from customer first and customer last, just because, um, so here we have customer ID, um, but, and this is just first name and last name. So if we wanna kind of distinguish those, we can say, we want those things, you know, and the countries and the invoice total. And again, this part I think remains the same. And you can have this, right? So um, Lenny Cooler is uh, associated with Steve Johnson, Bjorn Hansen from Norway is assigned to Margaret Park and so on and so forth. And so you can kind of see all of these different orders and stuff. Okay, you know what, we're gonna run out of time. I have a, just a few more examples here that you can kind of um, do. And this gets kind of more messy with what's called the common table expression, okay? Common table expression. And, uh, and this is how you start building really complicated SQL queries. Um, and I'll let, I'll, I'll, you know, this is up on my GitHub and I'll let you kind of explore this. And again, kind of the most important thing, I would just say, you know, try out some of these exercises and, uh, and work your way way through it, okay? What's the difference between join and inner join? Uh, actually, join and inner join are pretty much the same, but you have things called left join and right join, which will basically say, you know, sometimes when you match one table with another, there will be entries that exist over here that don't exist over here. And an inner join basically says, you're only gonna get entries where there's matches. Uh, a left join basically says from the left table, we're gonna get everything, and basically, if there's no match on the other table, we'll still return those things, but you're, you're just going to get kind of a null. So you might have like the album ID is, or artist ID is 25, and you have no artist number 25 over here. And so that entry will still like, get returned, and you'll just have like no artist name. You'll just get a null for the artist name. So there's left joins and right joins that kind of work in that way and things like that. All right, let me go ahead and give you your last view quiz answer for today. And this is your last view quiz answer ever for this quarter. And that's gonna be the letter E, the letter E as an elephant, E as an elephant. Um, SQL is, in my opinion, at least writing queries is not very difficult. The hardest thing is just kind of learning some of the vocabulary, like what are the key words and things like that. Um, and really the best way to practice is, or, or the best way to learn them is through a bit of practice. And I think this website, despite kind of being bogged down with ads is a, is a pretty good uh, resource there. Okay, um, we'll end here. We will see you guys on Friday. I still have to kind of put together that document and video show talking about what, what you can expect on the, uh, the final exam. Um, but we will see you guys on Friday. Have a good evening and uh, congrats for making it to week 10. <laughs>